is what I'm going to talk about. I'll get into those and try to keep it brief. Go right up there, John. Um, I've talked to you about the classification of the, and but quickly, uh, the, the the wild weasel word got out, and uh, I don't know when they declassified. Okay. Uh, it, it's amazing that it took the Air Force so long to come up with something to, to beat the SAMs, because uh, the earliest one I, or the earliest kill I located historically, we loaned airplanes, as probably most everybody knows, uh, to the Chinese government on Taiwan, and. Uh, <clears throat> Two main ones for reconnaissance were the uh, RD-57 and the U-2, and they started the the Chinese mainland started uh, knocking those down with S <laughs> SA-2s, and um, between 59 and 71, I was really surprised they knocked down 13 RD-57s and 11 U-2s. They were uh, and. So while all that was, you know, started back in 59, the Air Force just didn't seem to be concerned about SAMs. And um, then we lost, Gary Powers is the one we know most about, and right after that, during the Cuban uh, Missile Crisis, we lost a U-2. And then it wasn't until 1965 when we photoed a SAM site being set up in North Vietnam and um, that's when the F-100, and I'll get into a little bit of history on those, uh, they started putting together a wild weasel airplane. And uh, very promptly, uh, those, that first SAM site wasn't attacked because they knew the Russians were putting it together and they didn't want to kill Russians. And so it was off limits until they shot a F-40. Uh, go ahead, John. And that is the actual F4 that was shot down. Oh, it is. Oh, voila! Yeah, found the serial number. How about that? Okay, quickly. Uh, Wild Weasel One was four F100s put together with some kind of jury-rigged equipment uh, to see how they could uh, help out. Which was most at that time, most of the 105s were carrying the, uh, the bombs north, <clears throat> and. Uh, they were really handicapped. They didn't have tactics. They had really weak equipment. They didn't have any anti-radiation missiles. Uh, they did manage to kill some. They were kind of operating like a forward air controller. They, their equipment would home in on the site. They would fire rockets at it, and they would lead a flight of 105D models usually. They'd have hard bombs, and they'd hit the site. Um, <clears throat> That's about it, other than the fact that uh, in 45 days their four airplane detachment was down to two airplanes, uh, and I've read that it was really one, uh, and uh, the crews were either killed or prisoners or whatever. And so next is uh, Wild Weasel 2 was uh, they were trying, they knew they had to do something better. They started putting stuff on an R, uh, F4C. They ran into a lot of wiring problems. There was uh, the equipment they had, uh, the wiring was given an interference. Uh, they were trying to uh, put it on a, in the sparrow wheel well, and it was causing drag. The airplane wouldn't go very fast. So next, they came up with the 105. Uh, F was the first one, which I started flying with, and uh, the, they didn't fare a whole lot better on, uh, on that first F deployment. They sent six airplanes, uh, six of them to uh, a base in Thailand called Karat, six of them to Top Lee. Uh, and uh, I couldn't find numbers on the one at uh, the deployment to Karak, but the one at Tok Lee, in six weeks, the six airplanes were down to one. Uh, 
they had a little better equipment that they were learning all the time, and uh, it was a, a costly way to learn. Uh, while the G is up there, we'll see it a little later. Essentially, the same airplane. Uh, it improved the back seaters, the bear. The, the bear's uh, electronic warfare equipment, it put a jammer on it. Uh, and we got a standard arm on the KGM 78. Next. Um, and so, uh, oh, this, then they finally did get the F 4 weasel going. It never saw, never got to combat until 1972. I was there at the time. Uh, it's, it was unable to carry the standard arm, the AGM 78. Uh, and the guys complained about it a lot in the way the electronics work. And so it finally uh, grew into the F-4G. They, they turned out a whole new run of F-4s, and uh, the F-4G eventually replaced that. But that was way down. Go ahead, go ahead. Or, uh, um, this is uh, what the, the main threat was. It, uh, it's 35 feet long. It's only two feet in diameter, uh, eight feet wingspan on those uh, canards. It uh, would go about Mach 3, range of uh, 18 to 23 miles. It's uh, a, a telephone it's, pole. It's been referred three. to as a telephone <laughs> pole. Uh, I never saw them looking like a telephone pole. <laughs> <laughs> they always look like a missile. <laughs> Just, <laughs> Dead really high. Um, the good news was with that limited wingspan it had, uh, they were fairly easy to outmaneuver. That's easy for me to say standing here. Um, but uh, in fact, I was some of you guys that have flown newer simulators. Uh, do the new simulators shoot a SAM at you? Is there a visual? It, it can. So you can practice. You in the A-10 sim, they threw a rock at you. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. Uh, well, we didn't have a simulator. <clears throat> we didn't have anything that gave you the feel for how it is to be humming along at Mach 1 and have a missile coming at you at Mach 3. You know, and you knew how you were supposed to treat, treat it. And like I said, it was fairly easy to outmaneuver. But it was fatal to maneuver too soon because you pull all your G's, you lose your airspeed, it's out there at 10 miles or wherever it is, it's corrected, and uh, you're out of airspeed and ideas. So uh, that uh, a simulator would have helped a lot. Uh, the other thing about uh, avoiding them, the uh, Seeing them is essential. When they come off the ground, they've got a booster that drops off after I think it was six seconds. Uh, and so it would cause a big cloud of dirt on the ground as long as it wasn't coming out of a well camouflaged jungle area. And in that case, and even when there was a cloud of dirt, you had to kind of be looking in that area. Um, so, but you've got to see them soon. You can't, you can't wait till they're halfway there. Uh, then at night, the good news at night is, boy, it lights up the ground when that booster goes off. You see it right away. But then you've got that pinpoint of light coming at you. If it was a set of headlights that start getting wider apart as it gets closer, you have an idea. But when you don't have anything to judge depth with at night, uh, it can be fail. <laughs> uh, it had a 420 pound uh, warhead. It uh, had a 8,000 frags in it. it exploded in an 800 foot diameter. So uh, the, they could either detonate it from the ground or it had a proximity 210 feet of you. 
and I, I had one go by at night that must have had a broken proximity fuse because it went by so close that uh, the bear thought we were hit. It just jolted. She could hear it go by. Uh, and I, I've always figured it must, must have had a bad proximity fuse. And of course, impact it would go off. Let's see. It's next. Did it matter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two foot only. It doesn't matter. Yeah. If it hits well. you, I don't think it matters. <laughs> this is uh, the fan song radar. That's how it was guided. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> being a bear, I can't tell you a lot about that. But, uh, we had uh, the bear had a lot of high tech stuff in the back seat that he could really sort through the frequencies and PRS and all that kind of stuff. Uh, in the front seat, I had a, uh, a oscilloscope kind of gadget that was really pretty good. Uh, you were the center, uh, the airplane was the center of the scope, and uh, you got streaks of uh, light. And the closer you were to the SAM, the fan song radar or fire cam, whatever kind of radar, uh, the longer that stroke was. And so if you just if you're just being tickled with a little one ringer, uh, you know you're not too concerned. But if it builds to two when it hits three, uh, you're really nervous. Uh, but that is like an ADF. It points to wherever that SAM site is. So you know the work started. Uh, go ahead. Uh, and just one thing, uh, the picture to the right is what the SAM sites. Oh, good point. Good point. The, the, we call it, it doesn't look like it there, but in training, uh, the classic that the Russians set up was called, a, we call it a Star of David. That was the name that was put on it because those roads that go out to the missile, the, the van is in the center. It can be 1,400 feet from the launch pads. It can handle six of those missiles. You know, it was really a classic. But when it got into Vietnam, uh, they were mobile. They were shooting, pick up and move. They can move quick. So what was there one day probably isn't going to be there the next day. Good point, Tom. And one other thing, uh, they modified it and put a box up there by the antennas <laughs> and it must have been the guy that it was not doing well. They put a guy up there that had an optic device <laughs> and he had he a the junior guy, right? of being able to slew <laughs> the antennas and help pinpoint it. Yeah. And uh, but he's up there where the antennas are radiating and <laughs> and that's where the arm, the arms are homing on it. Uh, that that had to be the guy that got the short straw. Uh, okay, John, uh, fire cam uh, was, was the AAA radar control, and that uh, without getting too deep into what we did, you can't imagine the radar signals that you're getting. Uh, you know, and of course it wasn't much, but flying flying over Seattle, you'd probably feel totally overwhelmed. Pretty primitive there, you, but you still get a lot of different kinds of radar, and you have to be able, and the bear was the key guy, but we got tones in our headset, and I'll talk about that a little bit on training. You, uh, we had a sound lab we went to, and they tested us on being able to detect search radars from fire cam, AAA radars from uh, the interesting part, and I don't know whether it was accidental or intentional, but that fan song tone was just like a rattlesnake. Hmm. And a rattlesnake, if you've ever heard of rattlesnake, it really gets your attention. And when you got a fan song signal, it got your attention. <laughs> um, AAA, um, Interestingly enough, 80 to 85 percent of the losses in uh, in North Vietnam were AAA. Uh, 
Uncle Sam's uh, while they were effective, and I'll get into those kind of there in a minute. Uh, just throwing a Sam in the air just really screws things up because guys that are hauling bombs uh, all at once uh, lose focus on what they're bombing. They're in the middle of the bomb run to avoid the Sam. They got a jettison bombs. It, it gets you know, they don't have to just hit you to really do their work. Um, just for info, for every thousand feet you are above the ground to avoid AAA, you should be moving every second. If you're 10,000 feet, you need to be changing altitude or heading every 10 seconds. 15,000, 15 seconds. Uh, and that should work, except for the golden BB. I, a friend of mine, Roy Brenner, we were both Oregonians, went through pilot training together. We had to be in a two-ship flight. I was leading, we were kind of down southern part of North Vietnam, and we were escorting F-4s or something, I don't remember. <laughs> we got disconnected on the radio. One of us missed the frequency change or something. For some reason, we weren't on the same frequency. And we were getting a lot of AAA, and I was moving it around. I, I was watching it, knew it was there. He was concerned that I wasn't seeing it come up, and he and plus he had to join up so we could get our radio situation sorted out. And as he came by, you know, cut me off, he came to my six o'clock in the round that I had jinked for. Oh, he ran into it, and it caught him in the. Uh, Shrike missile. And so I'm watching the AAA and I'm watching him cut me off. I'm seeing he's going to join up, and all at once, his Shrike blows up on the wing. And when it blew up, he couldn't jettison it. It caught fire in a very few seconds. It, it burned through, and the bottom half of it fell off the airplane. One of the few signs I was in South Vietnam, uh, escorted him in with an A. Everything worked out okay. Um, the next one is a uh, search radar, a bar lock, long range, just like uh, our long range. Uh, I, the only reason that's notable, we went through a period of time when the rules of engagement said we weren't supposed to shoot at those. <laughs> Never did quite figure out why that was uh, the uh, because they could hand off targets to the SAM sites. Uh, next 